Hello, 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 and welcome to Maintain by Manel, Attain the Life That You Desire show. I am your host, Manel, and I'm very excited for us to begin episode eight, Honoring Your Grief. This month, we have had a theme of exploring why we feel bad. Why do we feel bad? We've talked about depression early in the month, talked about victim mindset. Last week, we talked about trauma, and today we'll be talking about grief. What is grief? What is grief? Grief is deep sorrow, deep sorrow, especially, but does not have to be caused by death. I would even say by loss, it's caused by loss. Grief largely impacts the emotional body because it's deep sorrow, deep sorrow, which is sadness. But naturally, when your emotional body feels something, it also impacts your physical body, your mental body, and your egoic body. Let's unpack today so we can truly honor, accept, flow, with any experience in our lives that may cause us grief. So excited, let's go. So, before we get started today, I want to invite you now, right now, right now, or maybe after when you finish this podcast, but now, now, go to my website, www.matain.me forward slash anxiety. That's www.mattain.me forward slash anxiety and download my free mini course, 10 Steps to Letting Go of Anxiety. Anxiety is a symptom of many of these things that we're talking about in the month of April, about victimhood, trauma, grief, It ultimately is a fear that's unknown and unexpressed. So download my mini course and explore, explore, get to the lowest common denominator, to the root of what your anxiety is. So excited to see you there. Okay, let's begin. Honoring your grief. Let's explore a bit more about why you're grieving. It could be the death, the death of a parent, a partner perhaps, a friend, a loved one, maybe even a child. Could be the death of somebody that's known worldwide and that leaves an impact and an imprint on, on you as a person. Could be the death of a pet, a beloved pet. Could be the end of a relationship, divorce, the end of a casual or a, a deep-rooted relationship. Could be the loss of a career. The end of different phases of life many times can elicit a deep sadness, a sorrow, a grief, children going off to school, empty nesters, even going to elementary school. I know many, many that have felt a sense of grief during the end of the transition of life. What is important and what I'd really like to emphasize, it's irrelevant, absolutely irrelevant, why you may be feeling grief or why somebody may be feeling grief. If you are feeling strong sorrow or sadness, it's irrelevant the why. First world problems is a term that I really wish that would be gone because first world problems undermines the reason for someone feeling a certain way. If you feel a certain way, it's irrelevant what external factor caused it. There's a sense of lack of happiness, satisfaction, ease in life. So I really want to make sure that regardless of why, if someone is feeling or you are feeling, it is relevant. It's relevant. We are on a recent live stream and someone was talking about feeling really sad. I feel really sad. And and, and I don't know how not to feel sad. And so it was like, well, why are you feeling sad? And the answer was, I lost my boyfriend, my dog died, and I'm changing jobs. And I laughed. And I said, well, how do you want to feel? How do you expect to feel? It is absolutely normal expression 
for anyone to feel a sense of sadness for any one of those experiences, much less you experiencing all three of them at the same time. So how would you like to or expect that you would be feeling after experiencing all of this in a very short time? And I got actually laughter in return. And the important aspect that this sort of tees up is to honor the process, to honor. There is an external life experience that is eliciting a very strong emotional experience and it is valid it is okay it is absolutely natural to feel that way and a lot of times people feel really bad not because they're feeling bad because there's a resistance to feeling bad. And just by giving, I don't like this word, but I'm gonna use it, permission to feeling sad. This young lady felt so much better because rather than being resistant to feeling sad, she was actually able to feel and be in her sadness. And to allow that emotional feeling to be part of her physical experience for that moment. So one of the biggest elements that I really want to stress with respect to grief is to honor, to honor, to honor the ride, the journey of the experience without overindulging in it, without identifying it, and we'll go into that a bit more, but to honor the experience. So grief, we talked about, is a deep sorrow. So that deep sorrow is the emotional body. For those of you that follow me and see my, we believe there's four bodies. I talk about and express four bodies. The egoic body where we hold our beliefs, the mental body where our thoughts are, the emotional body, which we're talking about largely today and right now with the feelings of sorrow and sadness and the physical body, our physical body. So grief largely impacts or the emotional body. There's a feeling of sadness, sorrow, deep sorrow. There could be a feeling of depressed. We talk about depression earlier in this, in this month and depression is a mental illness that impacts all four bodies. So we're not gonna say depression because a depression can be a consequence of not adequately muscling and acknowledging your grief as it occurs. And so it manifests into the four bodies in a different way. So there's actually seven stages or many different stages. It depends on where you go to of how many different stages there are with respect to grief. But there could be isolation and anger and denial and, and um, acceptance. So there's all these different stages, emotional stages. But what I'll offer, regardless of what it is, it's let go of the concept of labeling, of judging, of dissecting what your emotional feeling is, and just ride the wave of awareness. Acknowledge your feelings. Become aware of them. Honor them, be curious about them, observe them, see them, feel them, not by indulging in them, not by projecting them or amplifying them, intellectualizing them, negating them or suppressing them. That's my PAINS acronym for what we do, what we do and how we cope with emotion, which is project them and amplify, intellectualize, negate and suppress. Don't pain them, but honor them. See them, feel them. So the emotional body is a very strong player in the life experience of loss, of grief. And the best way to deal with it is through honoring it, riding the wave, seeing it, letting go of the resistance to the resistance and just seeing, oh, I feel sad and it is okay. Interesting. I feel angry right now and 
It is okay. Interesting. I feel isolated right now. And it is okay. So naturally, our four bodies are so connected. So when there is any emotional resistance, any emotional pain, the sorrow, the sadness, there's also going to be an impact on the physical body. Any grief that's accompanied due to a loss and death, there is a physical loss in life. If you lost a parent, a partner, a child, even a pet, this is someone that's been in your life on a regular basis maybe a daily basis, maybe all the time. There is a physical loss. Your physical experience is changed by not having them in your day-to-day -day life. Again, don't overindulge. Don't write any stories, but acknowledge that your life has changed. That your life has changed. There is change to your day-to-day -day life, to your interactions, to your engagements. And that loss, that change, is going to impact your emotions. And it will change. It will be different on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. But again, recognizing, being aware, being aware, accepting, allowing. Then your mental body. You might be overindulging in being a victim, overindulging in labeling your emotions and labeling the loss and, 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 and indulging that in your mental body. What I would suggest again is just a sense of awareness, recognizing that this is your life experience, that your life experience is here to teach you. Very similar to the message that we talked about, about overcoming trauma. But this is a life experience. What is clear and known and certain in life is that there is life and there is death. Death is a certainty of the human experience. What is unknown is the timing, the when, the where, the how. So if we let go of that sense, distorted sense of control, and recognize that, oh, this is one of the constants in life. It is constant. Death is constant. But the variable is the timing. And I have no control of it. It's interesting. I'm already going into the egoic body because it's all egoic body. This is all about beliefs. But ultimately, oh, I don't have control over the time. I know it's going to happen to everybody one day until science defies it. And I don't think science will ever define it. Defy it. It will happen, and I just don't know when. So in there, death is an invitation for understanding, for evolving a greater meaning in life. Of letting go of the misperception of control and recognizing, ooh, I really don't have control. The truth is, there is death. And the truth is, it's unknown when. So when I let go of this perception of control, then I allow life to unfold from a place of ease. There's a trust in your egoic body, the muscle of trust, trusting that there's a higher purpose, there's a meaning to life, that this meaning will be understood as life evolves, that you believe in something, God, the universe, inner being, higher power, life, what are your beliefs? You're supported. So again, death is the most wonderful opportunity to recalibrate to a deeper understanding of the meaning of life and decoupling from the tangible, decoupling from the external and recognizing the higher meaning and the beauty and the, and the life and the love of others, a love of life. So, grief will impact your four bodies and it gives you the opportunity to understand and to reflect on the greater meaning of life and the certainty of life and death. And, and to explore what life ultimately means to you. So there's absolute beauty in life.
life and death. And death invites you, and grief invites you to explore that. So sometimes it's not your grief that you're dealing with, but it could be the grief of others. So how do you support others that might be going through grieving processes? Again, it doesn't matter why they're grieving. It doesn't matter why. So let go of intellectualizing the why, of whether it's valid or invalid. So how do we support, ultimately the same way, not indulging, honoring the process, honoring and, and becoming aware of the four bodies, seeing the sadness for what it is, a normal part of the human life experience, the unfolding of life, letting go of stories and just accepting that this is a transition time in life to adopt and adapt to life without this person, this career, this job, this phase. And this is what I want to talk a bit about sympathy, empathy, and compassion. A lot of people will sympathize with people when they're going through difficult times. Sympathy feels really bad. Sympathy means feeling sorry for somebody. Feeling sorry for somebody takes their power away. Sympathy makes people disempowered. Feeling sorry means that somebody's not strong enough or capable. But somebody that's going through a loss or grief, it's not about feeling sorry. It's for acknowledging and honoring their life experience. And their life experience is teaching them to have a wider lens and understanding and perspective of the human journey. It's actually very powerful very powerful. All life experiences can be very powerful when they're allowed, they're flowed. So try to avoid feeling sorry, feeling sympathy. Empathy is another strong one and it's used in a lot of spiritual teachings. So, so empathy is feeling what the other person is feeling. They're feeling angry, you feel angry. They feel sorry, you feel sorry. They feel sad, you feel sad. They feel sorrow, you feel sorrow. You got it. So what does empathy do? It amplifies the way that someone's feeling. If I'm feeling angry and you're feeling angry with me, phew, takes that angry meter and puts it way up there. It doesn't feel good. When I share stories with people and feel how I'm feeling, I don't want them to indulge with me during my human moment, my human emotional experience. What do I ultimately want if I don't want sympathy and I don't want empathy? Empathy is important, and it's an important skill for us to have because empathy allows us to love and, 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 and understand the human experience. So I'm not negating the power of empathy and being empathetic because otherwise you're a narcissist and there's a lot of mental illnesses with not having empathy. But what I'm suggesting is during moments of my grief, empathy may not always be what serves me best. So what is Compassion. Compassion. Compassion might be um, mixed up with empathy, but compassion is love. It's unconditional love. Just letting people know that you're here for them, that you see them, that you're honoring wherever that they are, honoring that their sadness or honoring their anger, honoring wherever they are in their journey of evolving from this experience that they're having. So I really want you to focus and, and reflect a bit on when you may be sympathetic or have expressions of empathy and seeing whether you can muscle to compassion and whether that will serve the experience in a stronger way. So mourning and grieving are a natural part of the human experience. Doesn't matter what caused it. Doesn't matter if it's small, doesn't matter if it's big, it doesn't matter if it was the loss of a frog or the loss of a parent. If someone is feeling those intense feelings, it's absolutely valid. Absolutely valid. There was a moment in my life that I was coaching three people. It was a loss of a relationship, a loss of a pet, and a loss of a parent. And they all felt incredibly powerful. And actually the loss of the parent was more, in, sorry, the loss of the pet was more intense because that person was less emotionally capable of dealing with their emotions. So what's not valid or not relevant is what the story is, but helping people muscle through to be able to deal with life experiences. And we do that through honor and through compassion and a recognition that any life experience, experience particularly loss, death, 
is an opportunity to have a broader lens on the higher meaning of life and connecting with a sense of trust, love, acceptance for the flow and the unfolding of life. So I hope that this episode was insightful and allowed you to really look at grief from a wider lens and look at the power that any loss, any grief, any mourning can give you. Really looking forward to seeing you next week. Next week, we're actually going to be in the month of May and May we are going to be fo focusing on body image. You know, all month, we're going to talk about body image and how we can really empower ourselves to have a stronger sense of wholeness and fullness to who we are. So I'm really excited for next month and all of the topics that we'll be covering. So that is it for today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Please leave any comments. And again, I invite you, I invite you. A lot of anxiety might stem from grief. Again, if we don't deal with our emotions in a, from a place of honor and awareness and acceptance and allowing. So I invite you to download my free mini course, mini course on 10 steps of letting go of anxiety. Go to my website, www.matain.me forward slash live. That's www.matain.me forward slash anxiety and download my mini course and just get in there and start to explore your emotions, your feelings, your thoughts, all your four bodies. So excited to see you there. Looking forward to seeing you next podcast, next episode. Could be so exciting. My love, always.